Welcome to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and this is the channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky and unusual in the caravan world. Today I'm at Leeds Caravan Centre in West Yorkshire and we're going to be taking a look at a caravan that I've been dying to review on the channel. It's the Bailey Discovery D43 and it's the latest quirky offering from one of Britain's most long established and respected manufacturers. What makes this caravan so different? We're going to have to take a closer look and find out if this is not another white box approved. Come on, let's take a look. The Bailey Discovery range was launched in mid-2019, most likely in response to the unexpected popularity of the quirky Swift Base Camp concept for an entry-level tourer. The Discovery name was previously used by Bailey for their low-spec, lightweight models from the early 1990s through to the mid-2000s. Whilst the Swift Base Camp has been an undeniable success, the Bailey Discovery is still chasing on its coattails, though this is most likely due to the unfortunate timing of launching a new range just six months before the global pandemic. The Discovery offers great value for money, with this £18,900 D43 model being almost £2,500 cheaper than its rival, the Swift Base Camp 4. With 14 foot 3 inches of interior space and at 7 foot 4 inches wide, it's quite small by today's standards, but still manages to pack an awful lot inside. The Discovery is aimed at the outdoorsy type, with options to include a bike rack mounted on the A-frame or a large luggage locker. There's small touches such as external mains power points and externally accessed lockers that just help make outdoor living just that little bit easier with the new Discovery. It rides on the industry standard Alco chassis with a stabiliser hitch and gas assisted handbrake as standard. Though, like other rival ranges, it doesn't have shock absorbers fitted, so it tends to bounce slightly on the road when towing. Bailey have cleverly fitted the necessary wires into the main wiring loom to allow the easy fitment of a motor mover by the supplying dealer. For new models, as of 2022, the wiring loom will include the ability to specify an onboard Wi-Fi router. Perhaps the most eye-catching thing about this new Tourer is the curved back panels, which are constructed using Bailey's heavily tried and tested Alutec construction. These curves allow the fitment of a specially designed L-shaped awning, which expands the footprint of the Bailey Discovery considerably more than a conventional awning would do. This gives the Discovery a truly unique selling point amongst other caravans available on the market today. Despite a generous level of spec and an extremely robust construction, the Discovery D43 tips the scales at just 946 kilograms unladen and 1,082 kilograms fully laden, which is very impressive for a caravan of this size. Despite being the entry level offering, this caravan looks and feels far from cheap. Careful attention to detail with graphics and exterior colours give the Discovery a bold but stylish appearance. And this is reflected with the colours and the materials used on the interior as well. I'm here at the front end of the Bailey Discovery D43 and this is probably my favourite lounge of the two. Thanks in part to this huge picture window at the front, which really lets the daylight just flood into the caravan. Now, the criticism of this window when the caravan was new was that it's not very wide. Um, it's actually the standard center window from other models in the Bailey range. And when asked about it, Bailey justified it by saying that the costs involved with making a bigger window that could withstand the same um, wind pressure when towing um, would just raise the cost of the caravan to price it out of the market which it's aimed for, which is a perfectly logical explanation for why they chose a smaller window. And I think we can just accept that. It is an entry level caravan. You're going to have some compromises somewhere. But elsewhere, Bailey haven't compromised at all. You have nice touches like this occasional table which mean when someone pops over for a coffee, you can just pop your mugs on 
like so. And you have just a nice little place where you can have lunch, etc., etc. if there's just the two of you, without going to the faff of getting the huge table out and having to awkwardly put it up and put it into place for just a quick cup of tea or whatever. Those who've seen my channel before will know that I'm a little bit obsessed with orange and all things retro. So it's a little bit difficult for me to be objective about the styling of the Bailey Discovery versus its main rival, the Swift Base Camp. As we know, the Base Camp is similar tones of grey inside, but with orange as the predominant colour, which is amazing. <laughs> I want a Swift Base Camp just to join in with the owners club in their quest to find anything orange that will go inside a Swift Base Camp. But in all seriousness, it's nice to see that Bailey have chosen a, a contemporary, but you know, not too brash of a colour scheme inside. It's got this lovely grey herringbone upholstery combined with the mustardy yellow. It's really nice. It's a nice place to be. And it's a colour palette that sort of suits everyone and it's very easy to accessorise. The other thing that um, I think is lacking in here really is uh, curtains. And it's curtains for some, but not for others, it would seem. I thought that everyone would agree with me on this one, but I, as usual, had a little feel on social media as to what the people who've actually bought these caravans think about them. And pretty much all of them agreed that not having curtains is not a problem. To me, the space from a design point of view is very square, geometric, and lacking any random flair that soft furnishings like curtains give. I think that Bailey have tried a trick here with the curved back panels and the curved bathroom wall to just give it that little bit of flair. But to be honest, it doesn't translate to the interior styling so much. Great for the quirkiness of the exterior. Nice that the rear, seat, rear lounge has um, you know, this kind of alcovey bit where you can sit. But in terms of flair, the interior is slightly lacking, which you can excuse on an entry level caravan. But I do just think something as simple as curtains would really revive that. But it seems to be that's not what the consensus of the people who actually are buying these caravans are saying. So Bailey obviously know the market, so it's curtains for the curtains. <laughs> so apart from that, it's, you know, it's a nice place to be, a nice place to sit. This area at the front converts into a double bed as does the area at the back. I should point out that they're not particularly enormous double beds. They are four foot wide at their peak, um, but this front lounge and the rear lounge do taper off at one end. So it does limit how you would sleep on the bed. Personally, I would never sleep with my head next to the door anyway. So they've tapered it at the right angle here. Um, so effectively of the two dinettes, you would top and tail. This layout, I think, is great for couples who perhaps have the occasional grandchild or young couples who just have one child um, or perhaps young children who can fit on the rear beds. But there is no bunk bed option in the Discovery D43, so you really do have two doubles and that's it. That's perhaps where the Swift Base Camp 4 has the edge over its competition because it has the bunk beds at the back and a double bed at the front. However, um, reading again the feedback of Swift Base Camp 4 owners, a lot of them are couples who like the flexibility of having a fixed bed at, the back, at one end and a dinette to sit at at the other. So I perhaps urge people who think that to take a look at the Discovery D43 because it offers greater versatility. In fact, Bailey do market a specially made mattress for the rear lounge of the D43 to enable it to be converted almost permanently to a fixed bed. So you can have your fixed bed at the back and this very generous dining area at the front, which is a nice place to sit and relax and unwind. We've got ambient lighting up above, which again is a nice touch on a tour at an entry level spec. You also have these spotlights, which actually have USB chargers on the side and conveniently have these pockets here for storing your smart devices as they're charging. Now, that to me is a really nice touch that Bailey have included at this price point. They've identified that their customer who'd be buying this type of caravan is typically around my age bracket. And although it pains me to admit it, we do live for our phones. So the fact that there's charging points throughout, 
Um, they've even thought of the pockets for putting them in at night time. It's a really nice touch that I didn't expect to see in a caravan in the entry level um, price range. So it's these little features that kind of set Bailey apart. They're obviously designed by someone who's actually a caravanner and uses their products. Same reason here at the top end of the bed. On one side, you've got the 12 volt charger from the light. On the other, there's actually a mains socket. So you can plug your mains phone charger in. Um, in terms of the electrics, it's a fairly basic system, but Bailey quite cleverly store the battery just in the floor, slightly rear of the axle to help reduce the nose weight. Um, it's a great idea. It's out of the way. It's very helpful. Um, we also have the electrical control panel and this caravan is more than capable of running off grid. Criticism for me, if you're trying to pitch it against the Swift Base Camp, um, which really is its main competitor, is that the Discovery does not come with a solar panel as standard, whereas the Swift Base Camp does. I think in this day and age, Bailey really should be thinking about including the solar panel. Um, we're really all about um, trying to get people, more and more people, to leave the electric lead at home and encourage people to be caravanning off grid. The caravan is more than capable of that. There is no mains lighting in here. However, um, I think it's worth just including a solar panel on every caravan now because it's certainly the way that the world is going. And I do think it's a simple thing um, that Bailey could quite easily add to the spec list in the coming years. And it just makes the caravan that little bit more usable. In the center of the Bailey Discovery D34, we will find the kitchen. Now, my first impression is it's quite small, but Bailey have actually managed to pack quite a lot into this rather compact kitchen. Um, the main focal point at this end is the Thetford XXX um, hob and combination grill with oven. And I quite like this setup. I don't really find it a regular occurrence that you would use the grill and the oven at the same time. So this kind of space saving idea frees up the space below, which in here is huge. You can fit plenty of large bulky pans in here, um, store your kettle, etc. There's somewhere to put all that. In terms of storage, the overhead lockers, we have a push button one here, which you can use for food. There's a handy shelf divider in there to just increase the storage space. We also find that the cupboards are actually soft shut, which is a nice touch at this price point. Um, over here is where you would store your plates and things. You can see there's racks already for mugs. Um, there's no uh, plate rack as it stands, but it's a very simple thing that you can add in at a later date. We also find uh, a domestic three-way fridge, which has a large freezer compartment and a vegetable drawer, etc. Um, this is a fairly standard fitting now in caravans, but um, it's a three-way fridge. So it works from gas if you're off grid also works off mains electric when you're hooked up on site and there is a 12 volt function for when you're towing. Now it should be pointed out for people who are perhaps new to the world of caravanning you shouldn't ever run a caravan fridge from the leisure battery. Um, some of the modern fridges won't actually let you do that because it will flatten the battery in a matter of hours. The battery function is for when you're towing some of the more intelligent fridges will automatically um, run when connected to the car. Um, but if not, you sometimes have a 12 volt function for when you're towing. It should also be pointed out that you can't flatten the battery on the car because all modern cars with type approved tow bars and wiring looms will automatically cut the 12 volt function when the engine is switched off. So it won't perhaps freeze your ice blocks, but if you not lucky enough to keep the caravan on the drive and run the fridge for a few hours before you set off. Pop in a few freezer blocks, connect it to the car. By the time you get to site in a couple of hours time, the fridge should be nice and cool, enough to cool your drinks down for when you arrive. Above the fridge, you'll find this square sink, which is ample big enough for washing up large plates, pans, etc. There is a small amount of workspace behind it where I think you could possibly squeeze a small electric kettle. Um, one criticism of this particular kitchen is there isn't really anywhere to put a drainer. Um, the extension worktop is at the rear end of the kitchen and it matches the kind of nice grey slate um, worktops that Bailey have used throughout in the Discovery. Um, this is very sturdy, you could certainly put a chopping board on it and use it um, when preparing your meals. 
Although, again, a slight criticism, I would have liked to have seen it use the full depth of the kitchen just to give that extra little bit of worktop space. Perhaps an alternative to the drainer arrangement would be to have a similar type of extending worktop at this end of the kitchen. I know designers are probably shrieking, oh, but it's blocking the fire exit. Just, you know, six or seven inches is all it would need to give it enough space here to squeeze a small drainer in. But that said, the D34 model does have the smallest kitchen really in the range. Um, and I think really they've done a great job with it. It is what it is. There just physically isn't any more room um, to fit a bigger kitchen in. I do think the main rival, the Base Camp 4, has the better laid out kitchen of the two. Swift are quite savvy how they lay the round sinks into the worktop. Just creates more space rather than having this big lip around the edge of it that just means you can't put things there. And there's also no cover for the sink, which again would have been nice to see. Um, small changes that they could make to just take this design a little bit further. But overall, it's a workable kitchen. There's nothing really wrong with it. You've got a window for ventilation. You also find the electric point there for your kettle, etc. Um, and we also have the Truma system because in this caravan, you will notice there is no gas fire on show. Now this again is fairly normal in the industry today because the Discovery D34 uses the Truma combi boiler. So underneath the bunk is a um, hot water heater that also provides hot air and blows it around the various ducts in the caravan. That's all controlled from here. And being the Truma system, it's iNet ready. So if you want to upgrade to that, you can control it from your phone if you're someone who loves a gadget. If not, the control panel is perfectly sufficient. Opposite the kitchen, we will find the fairly small washroom. And although it's compact, it manages to squeeze in everything that you would need. There's an electrically flushing toilet, there's a separate sink, a shower, a large mirror, and plenty of storage options and shelves for anything that you might need to store in there. Overall, yes, it's small, but it perfectly does the job. So my final thoughts on the Bailey Discovery D43. Is it not another white box approved? Well, I have to say, after spending the afternoon in here and really poking about all the corners of the caravan, I have to conclude that it is not another white box approved. I think it's a great quirky alternative to the Swift Base Camp. It seems to be having spent a lot of time in both, um, what one is good at, the other isn't, and vice versa. Um, I like the fact that the Discovery keeps the bikes on the outside of the caravan, whereas the base camp brings them inside. But people might say that increases the nose weight for the car, whereas the base camp keeps them inside where it can be slightly better balanced throughout. Um, again, six and two threes. The Swift base camp and the Discovery range really are neck and neck in terms of what they offer. To me, the Swift base camp just has the slight edge because it's just that little bit more interesting as a design with its rear entrance door and the big swooping front roof line. But the trade-off with the Discovery, even though it's certainly squarer in appearance, is it feels like a bigger caravan inside. There's a lot more headroom at the front and this curved wall at the back makes this rear lounge a nice place to be. Um, obviously we know that the Alutec construction used at the Bailey is proven time and time again it really is probably the best construction method on the market at the moment in terms of the British vans and the track record for these Baileys is quite good they've been proven they've been taken to the Sahara Desert um, they've been taken up to Scandinavia and everything in between and Bailey are quite keen to prove their product which I think is quite refreshing to see a manufacturer who's getting behind the caravanners and showing them that actually we're willing to evolve our products and we're willing to involve you in that conversation and that's kind of where caravanners want to be now there's just a few slight shortcomings of the caravan like i pointed out the kitchen sink the slight lack of workspace in the kitchen um, but these are very minor criticisms of something which is actually a really good design and offers something that's just a little bit quirky and a bit more unusual. And I still think these turn heads when they arrive on the campsite. 
The future of the D43 is slightly uncertain. Um, although it's printed in the current range um, brochure for Bailey Caravans, they did recently announce that they possibly might not be making any more models for the foreseeable future. Um, this is mainly down to parts availability. We've seen the knock-on effect of uh, the global pandemic in the caravan industry now because um, they're struggling to get parts in and dealerships aren't getting their usual um, quota of caravans to be delivered and um, assigned at the factory. So with this massive influx of new caravanners coming to it, um, it's, it's just a double-edged sword of not enough being built and too many people wanting them. So that's possibly, we might see the D43 um, come back in the future, who knows. In the meantime, if you see one second-hand, grab it while you can. It's a great van. It's my favourite in the range of the Discovery models. I think the layout is different. It's an old-fashioned layout. This is the kind of thing that I have in my 70s Sprite Musketeer, and the layout works very well. I've really enjoyed having a look around it today. Um, if you've enjoyed this review, let me know in the comments below. You could be following Not Another White Box on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram where we're always chatting about caravans and talking about caravan design in general. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe. We've got more reviews coming this year of the latest on the world of quirky, cool and unusual caravans. So thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.